Another of the simple canes would be the checkerboard cane. And then, as you might have guessed, it has a picture of the checkerboard on the end that runs all the way through the cane. Unlike the jelly roll cane, this is not a round cane, which we can roll on our work surface. It's a square cane. So in building the checkerboard cane, you're going to learn how to build something that's more angular and square than we did with the jelly roll cane. Here again, you want to start with two contrasting colors of clay. I've chosen a gold and a black. These have both been run through the clay conditioning machine on the thickest setting and I have nice even amounts of each color. Now I'm going to section each color in half with my rigid blade and stack it on itself along that straight edge. And I'll do the same with the gold. Section with the rigid blade and stack it with the straight edges along each side. Now I want to stack the gold on top of the black. And at this point, don't forget to secure all your sheets together by gently rolling over them with a clay roller. Okay, now I need to have a straight edge on hand to cut, cut myself a lead edge that I can line my checkerboards up to. So I'm going to take a straight edge and lay it right along the edge of the, the clay pile. And I've taken the ends off one of my super slicers just so that I can drag it all the way through the clay without the, the handle getting in the way. So start slowly and try really hard to keep the blade at a perpendicular angle to the work surface. It's okay to just score down through and then go gradually deeper. And then remove the scrap. Now you can see we've got the, the beginning steps of a striped cane. All right, now I need to mark some increments that I can cut some more stripes in this, in this uh, slab of clay. And I want those increments to be the same width as my colors are thick. So I'm going to use my Creative Comb tool again. Each of those stripes is about a quarter of an inch thick because it was two layers of the thickest setting on the clay conditioning machine, which is about an eighth of an inch. So two eighths together makes a quarter. So each stripe is about a quarter, which equals the lines on this side of the creative comb. So I'm going to line up the edge of my gold clay for the bottom piece on, on those raised increments on the creative comb and gently press. And you can see the markings that it leaves. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite end. Just line up the edge of the gold on the creative comb, gently go across putting some finger pressure, and then remove. There you have perfectly quarter inch spaced increments that we can use for a guide. Okay, I need my straight edge again. I'm going to line up on the first set of increment marks. I'm going to take the rigid blade where I have the saddle removed and just score through this again gently and taking my time cutting down through. Then, what I want to do is flip this over so the black is on top, using finger pressure to seal it to the slab of clay, and then repeat the process, lining up to the next set of marks. And then flip this one over as well. And so you can see how we're getting that um, black gold, black gold pattern in the clay. Now, you want to repeat that until you have a series that is two blacks and two golds, and you can already see the checkerboard design forming on the end. So I have two sets of these already made. Now, you want to regroup um, this so that you get the checkerboard pattern. You can see if I line them up the wrong way, or it could even be the right way if you prefer that look, that you can get this type of a pattern. But if I turn it around end to end, and always make sure the gold lines up with black and black to gold, then the checkerboard pattern is created. Now it's really important that you follow the colors right down the line and line them up squarely. Okay, and I'm just going to trim this excess from the end and check it too. And have a beautiful checkerboard pattern. Another good tip is just to run your finger over the top of each side. With your finger, you can really tell if some of the um, layers are sticking out further than the other. Like on this side, this one row of black color is, is sticking out quite a bit from the others. So I'm going to take my um, blade and just shave that back so that it's even with the other stripes. And 
do that on all four sides to make sure that you have a really nice square cane. Okay, so now I have a nice square cane, whereas with the jelly roll cane, I had it in a circle. It's easy to comprehend how with a circle cane, you just roll it on the work surface and stretch it to make it smaller. Reducing a square cane is a little bit different. You may find it easier, you may find it harder. For myself, I think it takes a little more concentration and a little more work. I always start reducing a square cane with my fingers first. And I want to apply finger pressure all the way down the length of the cane just to kind of soften it and get the clay moving. Once I feel like all those stripes are bonded to each other and that most of the air is worked out from in between the layers, then I'll start rolling over the top. And before I roll, I always want to make sure the cane is perpendicular in front of my body so that I'm rolling in a straight ahead motion. I'm not rolling off to one side or the other. And you just start rolling and I'm applying some downward pressure and some back and forth pressure with the roller. And you'll do a side and then turn and do a side and then turn. Now I think most people naturally um, sort of angle off to one side or the other and if that if you find this to be the case um, the only way to cure that is practice 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 okay the clay is really starting to move now I can feel that it's soft and at this point I can even start reducing the cane by pulling from end to end now a strange thing about reducing canes is that the ends of the clay the clay that is out here is always going to move faster than the clay on the inside. And you'll find that you'll get these um, wonky ends where some of the clay is jutting out at an angle, and that's perfectly normal. Usually when you make a cane, you don't get to use 100% of it. The, the ends of the cane um, are usually set aside for scrap. Okay, so just keep reducing until the cane is the diameter that you want it to be. Once you've reduced a cane quite uh, down far enough to make a small bead, then square canes are really easy to slice. I'm going to use my creative comb once again to get those incremental markings on the side of my cane just by pressing gently. And there I have some markings to go by to cut more beads. And then just um, hold your blade perpendicular to the cane and cut down through gently. It's just that easy. Look at how beautiful those checkerboards are. And combined with jelly rolls, you can use these in combinations to make all kinds of fun um, and beautiful projects. Next, we're going to take both the jelly roll and the checkerboard and build a complex cane.